because of where you're at in your algebra uh, right now, this should be review, but I did want to go over it, and just in case it's still a little bit scary, uh, let's kind of bring it back to plain old um, solving rules, okay? Here we're given formulas, not any numbers in them at all, just all letters, and we're supposed to solve this for a specific variable. So this first one says we're supposed to solve D equals RT for R. Now let me change that just a minute and let's put up like kind of an example. If we had something like 5 equals um, 3 times R and I told you to solve for R, that would mean that we need to get the R alone, right? So we would want to remove things away from the R using our addition and multiplication properties uh, to be able to solve. So to undo this multiplication, we would have to do the opposite of multiplying by 3, which would be to divide both sides by 3. Multiplying and dividing by the same thing cancels it out, and we have left 5 thirds, or 5 divided by 3, equals R. Now if we can do it with numbers, we should be able to do it with variables. When you can do these, solve these problems for a specific variable, you know that you're got, you have your algebra skills down pat. So here we have D equals RT and we're going to solve that for R. That means that we want to get R all alone. Right now, R is being multiplied to T. So to undo that, we'd have to do the opposite, which would be to divide both sides by t. So now on the left-hand side, we have d divided by t equals, on the right-hand side, multiplying and dividing by the same thing, we just get r. And because we have solved for r, we have r all by itself, we're done. Now in the next problem, we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and it wants us to solve this problem for m. So here, we want to get m alone. Well, let's look and see what's happening to m. Right now, m is not alone because it's being multiplied to this. Well, what's the opposite of multiplying by this parenthesis? That would be to divide by that parenthesis, right? Well, we can do that as long as we do it to both sides. So now on the left, we have y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals, and on the right-hand side, we multiplied and divided by the same thing, so those cancel out, and so we're just left with m. Now, we solve for m because m is alone. Okay, let's look at another one. This one's a little bit more involved. This one says z equals x minus mu over sigma. This is a um, statistics formula for finding z-scores. Now, you don't have to know that. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing that matters here is that we're solving this equation for x, so we need to have x all alone, all by itself. Well, right now, x is not all by itself because it's got mu that's being subtracted from it, and then all of that is being divided by sigma. So we need to get rid of those things or undo those. Let's get rid of the sigma first because we know we don't like fractions. So instead of dividing by sigma, let's multiply both sides by sigma. This multiplying and dividing cancels each other out. So now we have z times sigma equals x minus mu. Now we still need to have x alone. We're not finished yet. Right now it's not alone because we're subtracting mu from it. Well, the opposite of subtracting mu would be to add mu. So let's add mu to both sides. And now on the left we have z times sigma plus mu equals, and on the right-hand side, we're left with x. We're done because x is all by itself. We've solved for that. It doesn't matter that it looks funny. You just follow your rules.